to our TBW Tuesday. Uh, this one is in November, so we're thankfully calling it, or we're uh, calling it Thankful for AI, which I'm not sure most folks are yet, um, but the keyword there is, is yet. Um, so if you haven't yet, be sure to grab the two links and Karen, we might have to repost them for folks that that join. There's an agenda and notes document. So don't worry about taking notes. Nearly everything I'm going to share is in that. You can also make a copy of it and kind of keep your own notes if you'd like. And then there'll be a survey at the end. Um, yes, it's a little bit of a survey, but really it's a great way to capture your own notes and then have them emailed back to you. Um, so they're ready for you in the morning when you're nice and fresh and back at your computer, as opposed to fumbling around um, notes. Uh, all right, so let's share screen. And uh, I heard sort of in our in our commentary before this call um, that folks think this topic is controversial. Um, and I'm going to say I think it's complex, but I don't think it's controversial in that it's a topic that we all can't ignore, um, in particular, if if we want to work more than a couple more years. You know, if you're already retired or literally right at the edge of retirement, maybe you could ignore it. But if there's women that you care about that are still working, then you probably can't ignore it if you want to be able to have conversations with um, with them. Uh, so I'm not going to do, do a whole lot of pros and cons during this um, talk. Uh, I think it's a tool and, and I don't think we can afford to let really helpful tools be ignored as women in the in the workplace. And so I think it's an important tool uh, that we've got to at least master to a to a basic degree. And so I'm going to show us some live examples uh, of literally how it works. I think that's the best way to learn. Um, and then I want us all to commit to next actions. And that can be whatever that means for you. We're going to talk through a few different options. This is the Google Doc that you have. Uh, and so you can view it, you can print it, you can do anything you want. If you want your own copy, go up here to file, make a copy, and it'll make a copy for you. And then you can edit it and do anything you'd like. You won't be able to edit this particular document. Um, so those are our three goals. The links everywhere we go are already here. So you can you can grab them later. Um, some terminology. We're going to focus uh, on chat GPT. Uh, when people say AI, you can talk about a, a whole wide range of things. I think chat GPT and some variations of it are the most accessible, the most applicable, the most affordable, just a really great entry point. I think for for most of us, and, and you could certainly go off in lots of other uh, lots of other directions from there, but that's where I'm going to focus um, today. And so I, I narrowed it down to the terminology that I think is relevant for that. So so AI is a big world. We're we're picking maybe this much of a slice of it, a big slice, a useful slice, but not the only slice. Um, and so we're going to go over some key terms. It really only two of these four. Do you need to know? Um, so I think that's the the biggest point in all this is that it feels really, really intimidating. Um, it did for me for a long time until I was traveling with somebody that used it all the time. Uh, of course, it was a young guy. And uh, I was actually, our team made the NCAA basketball tournament. And so we flew from Corpus Christi to, to Dayton, Ohio, and spent a couple of days there and then flew to Birmingham, Alabama and spent a couple of days there and we actually had some downtime and another one of the folks supporters that made the trip was a master at, at chat GPT. And I could just tell he was cranking out work at a rate that just floored me. I mean, he was getting things done. I was watching him do things so fast. I was like, oh my goodness, I've got to learn this. So as soon as we got back, fortunately, his wife and I are good friends too. I said, hey, I need to come over and learn, uh, learn what you're doing. And so I just watched and then um, kind of started putting together my own cheat sheet of teaching myself how to um, how to do it. Uh, but it really is. You can you 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 can start using AI in an hour. So I want to bust that myth that you've got to understand a whole lot to get started. I, I don't think you do. Um, so prompt and custom instructions. Those are the two words I would love for you to walk away with tonight 
those are, um, if you want to think about making your favorite recipe, those are the ingredients, right? A prompt and custom instructions are the ingredients that you need for that great recipe. And we can give you some examples down below. If you've already scrolled down, um, you'll, you'll see them. Um, so before, uh, before we get into the, to the, um, to the terminology, I want to do just an example. All right. And so I've got chat GPT open here. Let me just triple check that, um, that it, you guys are seeing, I've got the sharing correct. You guys saw it change, change windows. Okay. And if you've got questions, chat them. Um, I can, I, I can keep up and try to integrate them into the presentation or Karen is also, um, going to facilitate for us, but fire away on, on questions that you, that you've got. I'm going to pick on Pat since she's here. Um, so Pat, I want you to tell me the last job description that you had to write. Tell me a little bit about the, tell me a little bit about the position. Just what are some things about the job description? Oh, okay. I was director of culture and diversity. Uh, so my job was to manage the administrative functions of HR and to facilitate um, facilitate a culture that was inclus that is inclusive, focused on belonging and respecting diverse contributions. All right. That read okay. Um, so this is oh, this is a yes. this is a Chat GPT window. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm I'm typing in. I'm Pat. I've just started a new job. They're like, hey, um, you got to write your own job description, which I'm sure some of us have been in that situation, or you've taken on a new role, and you've got to and you've got to define it. Okay. So um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start with this, and we're gonna type this in, and we're just gonna hit enter. Oh my goodness. Now, how many of us enjoy a blank sheet of paper when we need to do something, right? How many of us just love opening the screen and seeing a blank sheet of paper versus how many of us like having a draft and then being able to edit that draft? So ChatGPT is your new research assistant, your new intern, your new um, copywriter. Now he needs supervision. He he can't, he, he's not a director, right? ChatGPT, you don't need to send him off on his own to do anything, but you need to think of him as your latest unpaid team member. So he he's a he's a new team member for you. He costs you about 20 bucks a month, um, but you've got to give him really specific instructions and you've got to check his work most of the time. You got to check it for, for reasonableness. You probably don't want to use it word for word. He can be wrong from time to time, but boy, he can get you stuck off of a blank sheet of paper and, and get you, get your wheels, your wheels turned it. Right. So, Pat, how long might you have taken to do a draft of a job description? Well, probably at least 45 minutes. OK. And so, uh, you know, she's just maybe saved 40 of those 45 minutes. Maybe she needs to spend another 10 polishing, uh, but she sure got something on on paper now with with that. Right. So I just wanted to show that this, it, just the the sheer power. Does anybody else have something they need to write? Um, that they need to write something for. Give give me an example of of anything you need to. You've got maybe on your on your list for tomorrow that you need to write something for. A uh, marketing email for the upcoming TBW Tuesday event. Okay. Do you have the? Um, okay. 
Actually, I'm going to start a new thread. We're going to talk about this in a second. Um, so I'm going to start a new thread. So I'm the marketing director for Texas Business Women. We have a virtual event every I, Tuesday. Um, yeah. I need to write next month's email with the theme of what's the theme i don't, I don't know. yeah make one up i'm sorry i don't have one uh let's say with the Just theme this of month. so let i need to write let's call it january's email with the theme of um starting the new year positively okay here is our last email for November. And I've got this one, I think. And you're just gonna paste that in. I, I sure it. am. I sure am. So I'm gonna go grab, you can't see this part because I'm probably not uh, probably not sharing on that, but I just went and grabbed her email that she had sent. Don't worry about formatting and then just hit enter. And let's see what it tells us. All right, do get errors from time to time. Let's try it again. Look at the titles. It just made all those up. <laughs> so we're going to talk about brainstorming. So you can see it takes a lot of creative liberty. Um, and we're going to talk about this is where prompts and custom instructions can can really help us. But when we when we say the word prompt, let's go back to our uh, go back to our notes here. Um, When we say the word prompt, that is the text or question you input into ChatGPT. Think of it as starting a conversation, right? So if you if you had a team member, an assistant sitting right across the desk from you, and you were going to task them with what they needed to do, this is what you would say. And learning prompts, I would dare say, is is learning how to prompt AI. I would put in the top five skill sets that all of us need to have as professionals because it's like trying to dig a ditch with a shovel versus a backhoe, right? If you had a backhoe sitting next to you, would anybody dig a ditch with a shovel? No, you would use the backhoe, right? So if you've got administrative work to do, writing to do, research to do, why would you not use an assistant for $20 to, to do a massive amount of that work for you. Not the final product by any stretch. I don't think any anybody, very few people would say that it's a final product, but it it, it is a tool that, that we can use and learning to prompt, learning how to write prompts, I would dare say is going to be up there with learning to code. Now, the great news is it's super easy. All of us know how to prompt because we tell people we interact with people all the time and ask them to help us with projects, which is all you're doing with, with chat GPT. Think of it as, think of it as a, um, as a, another, another tool right there. Um, and custom. And so prompts are the task you're asking for in that moment. Custom instructions are the, I'm an HR director, the things you want it to apply to everything that you write. So custom instructions are saying, you know, please use a formal tone. Um, please avoid slang. Um, 
you know, please be concise. If you've got things like that, custom instructions, you can put those in the prompts or you can put them in the custom instructions. So that's kind of like onboarding your new team member, right? Where you tell your new team member, here's all the, here's what we value. Here's what we do. The custom instructions are, um, are, are that, right? Um, and, and you can fall down this rabbit hole forever. Uh, there's lots of tools. Um, there's one called Team GPT that is basically Chat GPT, but for teams. And I would strongly encourage you, um, if you work with a team, to use the team version. The benefits are exponential with with that. Um, and it's it's again another twenty dollars. Um, and it uses a shared. I don't want to get into super technical. We can do another session and cover that. Uh, but it's it's really a very economical way for teams to share it. You can have a personal section and you can have a shared section um, where you share prompts and threads and, and work together on them. Um, so if I, I would say this is a very strong recommendation. Um, even if you don't have a formal team, one of the questions in the survey is who could your AI teammate be? Get get with each other and do a team GPT uh, just so occasionally you can bounce ideas off one another. It's so much more powerful um, that way. So even if even if it doesn't, my work team, ugh, you're saying that doesn't quite fit, then y'all get together and do a TBW team and practice this together. Um, it's such uh, such an 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 important tool. I, Pat, to your question about um, PowerPoint, I don't know. I haven't used it for that. I suspect the answer is yes. You've probably just got to figure out how to prompt it to do that. Hmm. I tried using the, I used the free version and it wouldn't build the graphics, but it would build out the template. So it would say like slide one, slide hmm. two, here's all the information and bullet points. Um, and then if you know PowerPoint well, you know that you can import or create a presentation using an outline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So ah. I think that was cool. Sorry. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to share just a few um, examples that I think are, are particularly powerful. Um, just to open your all of our minds of like, wow, th this is, this is, is powerful. Um, so how many of us do looms to teach people? How many of us have done looms? Does, when, when we say a loom show of hands, how many folks know what that is? Okay. So that tool, sh you'll want to add to your toolkit as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it directly AI, uh, but a loom is a, um, it lets you record your screen uh, your workflow. So if you're teaching somebody how to do something, it records your screen, it puts your little video in the corner, um, but it does a lot of other heavy lifting as well. So this here, um, another organization that I'm, that I'm with, um, it's kind of a crazy story. Um, our lead presenter is in Israel and uh, beginning of October, literally October 7th, um, she was scheduled to present a workshop. Um, I was in another meeting and Israel got bombed. Um, and so she wasn't able to present. And then when we rescheduled, she, her sirens were still going off quite a bit. And so she didn't feel comfortable hosting it by herself. She wanted one of us to be in the virtual room hosting and then her being able to present that way if she needed to cut away, she could. And so I did the first set and then I did a, a video. I couldn't do the second set. So I did a video to show other folks how to be a producer for her workshops. So I made this quick video. I think it's four minutes. All right. Loom does transcripts. Okay. So. Let's do, we're going to go back to chat GPT. We're going to say, and then we're going to go to this prompt that I read about in an article. Um, I'm a part of an entrepreneur group, but I read this prompt here. 
and it's how to turn a video into a standard operating procedure. We all love writing those, right? Standard operating procedures are a lot of fun to, about like job descriptions. They're so much fun to write. Okay, so we're gonna go over to chat GPT. We're gonna put this prompt in here, transform the below transcript into a standard operating procedure. And then we're going to paste the transcript from my Loom video. So I'm gonna go back to my Loom video. I'm gonna copy this, go over to chat GPT, I'm gonna paste it in. So if I had folks that that don't love to learn watching a video or I wanted to have a written document to accompany the video, right? This SOP is applicable to team members responsible for producing and managing Lydia's events, resources. Here's what you need. Here's what you need. Literally takes the steps. So in four minutes, I recorded a how-to video. And then in another couple of minutes, I can take the transcript for that, paste it in here, and now share with my team both a video and a written SOP of how to handle that. Crazy fast. I mean, what would have taken us, we would have had to coordinate schedules. We would have had to do all kinds of things in the past and who's got time for that, right? To, a lot of times we, the work we keep is work we don't know how to hand off because we're not sure how to train somebody else to do it. Maybe not at a perfect level, but at least at a reasonable level for us. And so these tools can help us delegate and teach and really empower our, our teams in that. And so that prompt is literally included for you here. So there's that exact, there's that exact prompt you can copy and paste it, take any any video um, that you've got a transcript for, plug it in, and it will it will make an SOP. The the guy that wrote it has a, some more thoughts to to add there, um, add there too. Um, so who's writing? Um, anybody got to write a, a longer article in the in the near future? Oh, I hadn't checked chat. Oh, you guys are. Okay. What about a newsletter? A newsletter? All right. Perfect. Um, so what's the topic of your newsletter? So let's say like the president's newsletter that we do, what are some things that it could help me like have a template for? Okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to steal a couple, one of these. So I'm going to steal this one. I'm writing a blog post about new app ideas. So we're going to go grab it. And we're going to start a new thread. We're going to say, I'm writing a blog post. What would you say you're writing about? Um, women's issues in the workplace. Okay. Love it. What are 15 questions that someone might ask me? about this topic, make them spicy and if helpful, cite statistics to make the questions more interesting. All right, so let's yeah, try that. This is gonna get juicy. Relevant. Like it's reading our minds. Well, it kind of is, right? That's how it gets trained is all of the other information that's out there, which is one of the ethical kind of questions in in that. Um, but you're you're not far off in yeah. that that's how it how it learns. Um and I think and, and y'all, I think we should debate the ethics and be informed on the ethics, but also use the dadgum tool, right? I'm not saying ignore the ethics and stick our heads in the sand and and not pretend that there's complex things that we need to we need to understand, but at the same time, to really understand them, you've got to be using the, you've got to be using the tool and you've got to be familiar with the tool. And we can't be ceding ground 
to young people that are that are masters at using these tools just because they're they're willing to spend a couple hours trying it out, right? Um, I think that's my point. Is mm-hmm. I see us get scared of technology and and not lean into it when this can make our work so much better. And when we need to compete in the workplace, why would we not use, I mean, are we still using manual typewriters? No, we use the tools that are, that are available to us. That's good. So Pat asked the question, can it create a schedule or a template for a training project of 150 people with three topics? Yes. All right. Let's try to write a prompt for that. So let's tell it. Okay. So let's go back to our notes and somebody paste, um, somebody paste the, um, let's do a really thorough prompt. So we're going to go back up here. A, a great prompt has six essential components. So let's take these one by one. Um, so y'all see them task description context role. So we're going to take these one by one and we're going to give it quite a bit of information. So what was the first one was task. Okay. So I need a training schedule for 150 employees for three topics for how long? Between December and uh, February. December and February. Give me more. How was the training delivered? Uh, virtual training, a maximum of 20 per class. Okay. Um, the training will be delivered virtually with a maximum of 20. Is there a specific industry or anybody, audi- the audience? Oh, it's it's a customer. Um, I'm looking for a template because I have to train 150 employees three different topics. All of them have to do the three topics and I have to put a schedule together between December and February. So this Okay. Is so what the first life. one was task. What was the second one? What was the second thing in our good prompt? Well, I don't look have at the that. notes. I don't have the I don't have that up. So it was context. Okay. All right. I'll, so let's give it this was your I'll point, Pat, about losing our voice. Let's give it, let's give it some context. So without sharing, you know, anything proprietary, tell Mm -hmm. us a little bit about the industry or their service or that kind of thing. Oh, this is um, human performance training to help employees not hurt or kill themselves while on an oil rig. (laughs) That's what the training is for. Okay. Beautiful. Um, all right, then our oh um, role. How long is What's your role? Oh, I'm the trainer, and the training is um, each training session is one hour long. Okay, then let's go put that. Let's put this over here. Each training session will be one hour long. I'm the trainer. Let's tell it a little bit about about you. Like what what values or how would you describe your training? And I like my trainings to be, what are some words you would use to describe your trainings? Well, highly interactive, um, utilize Slido and breakout sessions. Utilize Slido, what is that? Oh, Slido is, you know, the um, where people, scan a qrc code and oh okay you highly interactive utilize technology what was the third thing you said and and breakout rooms because it's it's over zoom yeah you want it gamified oh okay that's a good way to put it um that's what it sounded like you were talking about like the qr like gamification gamified all right beautiful let's go back now we want to talk about specific requirements anything else that we haven't covered uh, just that it's virtual, central, standard time. That's that's all I can think of, really. Okay. Um. So it's each cut and um. Uh, the training schedule should be based on central, standard time. All right. I like that. 
Okay. Boundaries, any boundaries that we haven't covered? Mm, no Mondays or Fridays. Oh, okay. Uh, no training can be conducted on Mondays or Fridays. All right, beautiful. Um, and then re any other reasoning, any anything that you, if you were tasking a team member to do it, that you else you would tell them? Mm, none that I can think of. All right. Well, this will be a good one. So let's, this is a beautiful example. Let's start with this and let's see what it does. Mm Oh, I love the implementation steps. <laughs> I literally have to turn this in tomorrow. All right. Well, we'll we'll uh, we'll send it over to you. Golly, that's awesome. Okay, so let I want to demonstrate another step. So each of these conversations, that's probably another word we should use. Each of these, you notice every time we asked it a question on a new topic, we started a new one. But Pat, I want you to find something about this that you don't like that you want it to improve upon. So is there anything in this that you feel like isn't quite right or needs to be improved upon? Um, probably the times, let's see. Okay. Um, so 10 to 10.30 is too close. I need at okay. least an hour in between. So this is an excellent start. The times are too close together. Um, we need a longer break between sessions. At least how long? Um, at least 90 minutes. Okay. Can you update? Or that's, I was going to give it to them in a spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. So the cool um, thing is that it is like a person. And the more you, the more you teach it, the smarter it gets. So, Kendra, when you say the more you teach it, are you saying that it becomes your personalized? Yes. Okay. Yes. Like if you were to have to do more training schedules and the more times you had had it do training sessions, the better it would be. When you say it's losing your voice, those are people that are just doing generic chat GPT. If you really, and it's kind of like a new team member, right? Somebody if you work with them day after day after day after day, you get more aligned. And this is the same, this is the same way. Mm. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. So if you wanted to say, add in humor and you want it to be a little more sarcastic and sure. Yeah. And Let's add in that. those personality traits. This is great. Can we rewrite? Um, can we write a uh an email to the attendees with an overview and an invitation to register let's make it playful and fun since this can be a boring topic all right.
dodge the hazards. You see, bro. Now, you know, some of the language is kind of weird, right? She wouldn't call them our brave oil rig crew, right? So that's probably not the wording she would use, or maybe she would. Um, okay. Actually, so, I'm amazed that. Okay. So, so, so sometimes cool. it'll, it'll, um, you know, use words that you're like, mm, not so much. Um, but you could, you know, you can, uh, you can adjust. Well, how do you get that to me? I mean, does, is this a Word document, an editable Word document or what? No, you you I would copy transfer. and paste it into whatever you're going to, you're uh -huh. going to do, but it copies and pastes well. So that's a great question. So let's, let's say you're going to, you're creating a document that you're going to share with your team. Hey, Kendra, hang uh -huh. on, go up. There's a, a little paper clip or it looks like a piece of paper if you copy that it copies the whole thing yeah i didn't want to grab the whole thing oh, uh, okay because doesn't it format it if you do it like this yes it should it should it should i just wanted to grab this portion of it let's see and i'm i've got a bunch of windows on a tiny screen so you're right i may not be seeing i may not be seeing everything but let's do file new document and you could do this in Word, Pat, just, you know, whatever. It's fine I where I want to paste it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just walk in and paste, and there you go. Um, paste and save it where it is. Save it yeah, you would, you would right. save it wherever it is, and then you could print it or PDF it, and then give it to your, you know, your team or share, you know, whatever, whatever your normal kind of team protocols are for sharing documents. Kendra, can you ask it to give you that detailed schedule for specific dates from December 1st through February 28th? Let's try it. And see what it, it does. All right. Uh, can you help me create the detailed schedule with specific dates as outlined? That's fantastic. I'm blown away. <laughs> all right, so we're going to copy this over for you so you can get some sleep tonight and not be up all night. Um, not be up all night working. Oh, this, this looks awesome. I mean, all I have to do is switch out the title of the training, but we've got the dates, days, the times. So do you already know the topics of the trainings? Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's super easy. I just had to mentally, three people, you know, how many classes divided by into 150? We're going to add this into your, going to add this into your document. So you've got that. There you go. Um, do you do you have the other part that has like things to consider? Yep, yep. Let's go here. Oh, thanks for um. Thank you very much. It's very very. I'm sold. Where do I sign? <laughs> All right. So we're gonna grab this. Yeah, but where do you sign? Is I encourage y'all to just get an account and go play. You know that that's really it. I I don't have a dog in this hunt. Just I think it's a tool that we as women often kind of, I don't want to say get intimidated by, but we let the questions, we let the questions slow us down sometimes um, and, and don't dive in and just 
play with it, you know, for an hour or two and see what it can, um, what it can do. You said you needed these implementation steps. Yes. Yeah. So what is it? Is it a month by month or do you make a commitment? Desiree talked about a free one versus a paid one. Yeah, you... there's a free, to me, the difference in chat GPT, the, the quality and the speed is well worth the, the 20 bucks or 25 bucks it is. Um, so I, it's like 20, 25 bucks for a, a membership to chat GPT. So my plan, so $20 a month, it gives you the fastest model, um, which, and the speed really does. And sometimes the other one gets hung up more often. Again, I think for, for such a tiny investment, and then I would really recommend y'all layer Team GPT on top and, and primarily use Team GPT with your with your teammates. Um, the learning, even if it's just a group of TBW people, get in there and do it together. Team GPT is only $20 more for 10 people. Um, and so it's actually cheaper, right? So for 40 bucks plus some usage fees, you could give you 10 people could have it could basically share access to to it. Um, and it's I think the collaboration that comes in. So you can share like if I wanted to share this with Pat, there's a little bit of of sharing um, capability in chat GPT, but it's it's not great. It's not great at all. Uh, but if you use team GPT, the sharing is phenomenal and you can share prompts you can save prompts you can do all kinds of things i've just started going to team gpt and it's going to take me a minute to move all of my um all of my personal stuff over but i think i think y'all should jump straight to team gpt get together in a group whether it's your workplace or each other and and collaborate that way uh very similar interface Kendra, have you used it for any kind of data analysis? I have not. I the attach um, button down at the bottom. Have you attached anything or what does that do? I haven't. I've only I've only done the cut and paste um, okay. of just dumping a whole lot of data into it and and seeing what happens. I I I wouldn't say I'm a advanced user by any stretch. Um, I use it a lot for brainstorming. Um, I've started using it. I'm doing a lot of SOPs and a lot of teaching. So I've started using it in Loom. I, I would say the bulk of what I do right now involves a lot of teaching and training. And so I'm I'm more using it for, for that. What about things that have a legal implication? Like I'm looking at Laura, how could Laura use chat gpt for something that you can't afford to have wrong answer well um i think that's a great that's a great point let's look at um um so i had a client ask me about um qualified small business stock so you can use it again as a researcher i'm not putting in who the client is I'm not putting in any identifiable, you know, so Laura could say I'm president of a credit union and um, uh, we need information on Bank Secrecy Act. You know, if I need to get my board up to speed on bank secrecy, now there's already, there's already tools out there, but let's hypothetically say that, that Laura says, you know, I need to give, I need to give my board a quick refresher on Bank Secrecy Act, you know, what, um, what could it, you know, it, it'll, I think I actually did bank secrecy act. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's, it's meaty these days. Um, and, and it's a big deal in financial institutions. Um, uh, so I was kind of, um, working on that. So I have a few, I have a meeting in a few minutes about the bank secrecy act. What are the main points I should know? I have used that so many times when I've gotten called, um, uh, mm. just a, a kind of a random out of the blue question of something I know a little bit about, but not a lot about. Um, and and then you can kind of refine it from from there. Mm. So we're um, so Pat asked the question like what did what does Laura need to be worried about? So because this is AI and it's out there, you know. So 
is this information shared, like your questions, your, and then the answers that it's doing. But since if I've created my own login, my own account, don't I own that? Or like, why, why would I need to be careful? You said you're going to do pros and cons. So uh, what's the con of using this chat GPT? Hmm. I'm not aware of one unless you share, which you couldn't do anyway, um, unless you were to share a, a member's, you know, confidential information, which you, you can't mm -hmm. do that anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if I'm, um, if I'm Apple, you know, might and my employees are using this, might Microsoft employees be trying to figure out somewhere publicly what the Apple employees are asking chat GPT about? I, I mean, maybe um, they're probably finding other ways to do that. But I would say treat it with the same level of confidentiality you would treat an intern, right? You wouldn't give an intern super sensitive member information. You would give them enough to go work on the the topic. So I, I think if you treat it like an intern, you're good to go. Very good, well, thank you. And the concern, uh, another concern I've heard is, so if you ask a technical question, how do you know what you should be wary of and what to just accept because you looked it up? You know, it's kind of like the whole Google thing. You can't believe everything that Google tells you. We know that now. So how do you know how to weigh the information that's technical in nature. Yeah, I think that's where your professional, you can't outsource everything to it. I think that's where your professional expertise matters. Um, and you might, you might ask it for sources um, like on this one. So um, let's try this one. Let's say I need a source for item number one. Do you have a citation? Hmm. So I, I, I really, when, when the person that taught me, Keith said, you know, you got to treat it like a human, you got to treat it like an intern. You've, you've really got to, um, think about teaching it and interacting with it the same way you would a, a person, you know, in, in that regard. Um, so it looks like it's added FinCEN.gov. So it's, it's given you pretty good, pretty good sources now at the end of that. And so that's something you could put in your, your global custom instructions, always use for technical topics, always include citations right? If, if you want that. Um, so this is giving you the citation at the end of every one. This is giving you where, so let's like, let's, let's click on this and see where it goes. So it's taking you right, right straight to there. Wow. That's tremendous. Yeah. I think the key is, is fact checking it just like you would an intern. Right. Um, you know, and like that pulled up a .gov website. So you're, you're feeling very confident in that source. Mm -hmm. All right. So I know we're coming up on the, on the, our hour. Um, how, how well did we do on our, on our first two? We're going to do our third here in a minute, but how, how well do we think we did on our, on our first two? Amazing more comfortable with it as a tool. Lots yeah. of great comments in the chat, Kendra. Oh, beautiful. Sorry. I totally missed. Uh, no, they're just saying, I love this. Want to le learn more information. So cool. Going to have fun with this. So lots of great feedback. Okay. So while, while you're there, y'all open up that second link that is a, a survey link. And the very first thing you're going to do is put in your email. None of these questions are required, but Think about each one of them and go ahead and make notes right now while it's fresh, right? The most interesting thing I learned, I'm still concerned about the most obvious areas where it could help me, 
my AI teammates. I would like to see more examples of, I would like a detailed walkthrough. Just go ahead and make your notes. I'll get a copy too. And if there's some trends, I, we can work on additional worksheets, but at least capture, at least capture some of these where when you wake up tomorrow morning, it's like, oh man, that was cool. But where do I go with that? You know, capture your, your action items and it'll email it. As soon as you submit, it's going to email it right back to you. Right. I was typing on it and then it moved. Okay. And I need to share, Pat, I'll share this uh this this uh Google Doc with you. So you've got a Okay. You can be done with your, <laughs> your homework. If you tweaks, I'm gonna share it with uh my coworker tomorrow, Juana, because we have to customize a leadership training based on something that we already have, but they want it tweaked. So I'm going to, the whole copying and putting it in there, that's, that's pretty interesting. Let me see. Thank you for sharing, Kendra. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm like Elva. I'm going to have some fun with this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm right now writing SOPs for, for my departments and um, hiring new people. So uh, this is going to be very helpful. I'd also like to learn more about Loom because yeah. having, having the video and then just grabbing that text, uh, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Give, I would say give yourself an hour, 30 minutes or an hour to set up Loom and try it and then give yourself a separate hour to just play with, with ChatGPT. Um, and you probably need right about that long. Your first 30 minutes are going to be frustrating to take some minutes to set up and put in your credit card and yada, yada, yada. But your second 30 minutes are going to be wonderful. So give it, uh -huh. give each of them an hour. Thank you for that tip. Now you, you recommended three different ones. So, I mean, the difference between one or the other. Well, okay. So Loom, Loom is to record a screen share. Okay. Um, so if you're doing yeah. a lot of training or you need to explain, it makes it super easy to do. That. There's all kinds of, you can do a Zoom, you can do all kinds of things, but some of the features in Loom uh, are just really user-friendly and, and there's a free version. You can do up to 25 videos with the free version of it. Oh. Okay. Um, so I, Loom, it just needs to be in your arsenal of, I wouldn't okay. even call it AI, but it just needs to be in, in our toolkit probably of, tools that we know how to use. Um, I included it here to, to write the SOP. You got to have the transcript from Loom. So you do your, Laura oh. would, would run through a task recorded on the Loom, then go grab that transcript and put it in chat GPT. And that's what would spit out her standard operating procedure document. Um, and then I, I really encourage y'all to use it as a team. Um, you don't have to, you could certainly just use chat GPT, but I think the benefits of being on this learning journey as a team are, are even if it's just one or two other people, you know, Lori, if you've got one or two other people at the credit union that are kind of willing to test it out with you, set, set up team GPT with them. Thank you. And the one to, to use, you said, is it Tammy? Let me see. The link is in the the link is in the notes. Um, oh, okay. I yeah, all three like links three are, all three links are right there for you. Oh, okay. All right. I thought we had to choose between one or another. Okay, great. This is we, awesome, Kendra. Thank you so much. Sure. So good. Um, we any other questions for Kendra before we take a moment and we want to recognize our our veterans because this is. The month of Veterans Day, and we just celebrated it this past weekend. And so we just want to take a moment and recognize our veterans that are our members. And Laura has a a wonderful slide and some information for us. So Laura, if you if there are no more questions, um, we're gonna jump right to that part. So we can just honor your time. It's already kind of getting late, but we we don't want to let this day go by without thanking our veterans. 
Thank you, Madam President, and thank you for this honor. Um, yes, I'll be respectful of your time, just taking a few, few more minutes uh, so we can recognize and in the spirit of Thanksgiving, being thankful for our veterans. If you all know, Veterans Day was just this past weekend on Saturday at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. That's when we celebrate Veterans Day. This is the day we honor all our veterans who step forward and answer the call to defend this nation at home and abroad. On this day, we are thankful. We honor their courage, patriotism, and what they have done for us. This year's theme for Veterans Day is service. So even if a veteran has come home yesterday or within the last week or even in the last century, be sure to say those words and mean it coming from your heart that they need to hear and they deserve to hear. Find a veteran and say thank you for your service. As a military spouse and I'm with my husband out in public and someone comes up to him and thanks him for his service, he always just rejects it and, and you know, no, I'm not worthy. Oh, you know, it's not a big deal, but I know it matters. And that pride may come up, that humbleness may come up, um, but it matters and it makes me proud. Um, <clears throat> so there is a special bond uh, for me in having that military family. We remember those who served in combat on this Veterans Day. We also do well to remember our veterans and their contributions to our country continuing long after they come home. They continue to serve our country in civilian life. They lead in business, in education, in law enforcement, in public service at every level. So I wanted to take just a moment and recognize a few of our TBW sisters who are veterans and thank them for their service to our great country. We have one on the call with us today, Miss Glenda Reichland. Glenda mm -hmm. may be petite in stature and quiet, but that is not who she is underneath it all. Underneath that, she has the heart and the soul of a natural born leader who excels in the face of any challenge. Glenda began her Air Force career in 1980, entering the military under an age waiver. Glenda was recognized as a distinguished graduate of officer training. She attended the first level squadron officer school in the area of leadership development as a junior officer. She. Um, as I mentioned, she began in 1980, and some of her first challenges then what became the highlights of her 27 years of service in the United States Air Force. She's, mm -hmm. while serving in Germany, Glenda suddenly became a window because of the tragic death of her husband in an aircraft accident. Her strength and leadership were called into action with her decision to keep her children in Germany and to continue her career in the military as a single mother. She rose through the ranks, um, becoming captain, major, lieutenant colonel from 97 to 2003, and then colonel from 2003 to 2008, commanded the largest support group in the United States Air Force. Linda's motto for leadership, as a commander, you are where the buck stops here. You're in charge of everything and everyone under your command. Being that commander, you're not only responsible for the mission, but also for the well-being and safety of equipment and most importantly, the people under your command. Glenda's leadership, ability to plan and command has been recognized numerous times through her career. Glenda's rise through the ranks and recognition of her leadership skills came not only because of her positive results in each assignment, but because she also men mentored and always supported those in her command, especially the women. Entering the United States Air Force as an age waiver, Glenda was the recruit that everyone looked up to and sought advice from. As she rose through the ranks, she men mentored women at all ranks so they too could achieve her goals. So let's give some Zoom praise to Glenda. Um, Glenda's from San, San Antonio. Next, I'd like to recognize Kimberly Henry. Kimberly is from San Angelo, and but she is originally from a small town in Kansas. She enlisted in the Navy in 2009, shortly after high school. 
Kimberly quickly specialized in signals intelligent analysis as she began her service. This domain is crucial for understanding and predicting adversary actions. And Kimberly's proficiency ensured that her team and those relying on intelligence were always steps ahead. She has been stationed in Hawaii, Rhode Island, Texas, and Florida Naval and Joint Bases. During her enlistment, Kimberly served in various leadership roles, completing high priority operations. She brought that experience to Goodfellow Air Force Base as an advanced Naval Intelligence Force instructor. While at Goodfellow, she was assigned to the role of instructor supervisor and led the training programs of her peers. Furthermore, Kimberly immersed herself not only in just the primary duty, but also the roles that spoke to her commitment and the well being of her comrades. Recognizing the need for steadfast advocacy and support, she took on the responsibility of sexual assault prevention and response specialist. After 10 years, Petty Officer Henry honorably separated from the Navy to pursue her social work career and adopted her nieces. Today, Kimberly owns her own business and has won awards for advocacy and leadership. She hopes to inspire younger generations never to give up and truly understand their worth. Being a woman veteran means being a part of something less than 1.5% of American population understands. I am honored to be a woman veteran and driven to continue to fight for opportunities for others, even outside of service. So give a Zoom applause to Kimberly. Um, she may not be on the call, um, but I hope she'll see this recording. And those are just two of the women that we hold near and dear, just like the military, that's a brotherhood, um, but TBW has that sisterhood. Um, so giving praise and recognition to our women veterans as well. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> well, thank you all for um, joining our TBW Tuesday, I'll turn it back over to Madam President. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, ladies, so much for being on today. Um, we are not going to have a TBW Tuesday in December because of the holidays and the holiday parties. So we will resume in January. And I just want to thank Kendra for such a amazing presentation. I think everybody came away with so much information and probably some surprises that they didn't expect about being thankful for AI. So um, we are going to end the recording.